Rube, we're into almost OTAs. We're in the spring workout program, and we have a lot of stuff to talk about today. Busy week. Definitely a lot to get to. Yeah, it was nice being down at the uh, Novacare Complex, really being down there for the draft, and then uh, getting a chance to talk to some players. So uh, this is Eagle Eye Podcast with Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. We want to talk about uh, a few of the things some of the players said. The Eagles brought uh, down some players, made them available to the media this week, and they, they brought out the veterans, Jason Kelsey, Brandon Graham, uh, Darius Slay. Sorry about saying Darius there, Slay. Uh, Devontae Smith and uh, Jason Kelsey. I mentioned Jason Kelsey. You did. Did I miss one in there? You did, but I don't remember who. <laughs> it's all right. Well, we talked to some veterans, and, and we'll go through uh, some of what they said because they, they talked about some big – uh, topics that we need to discuss uh, as we get into the next phase of this off season. Now, and we'll also at the end, we'll, we'll take a look at some of the scouting department changes that the Eagles have gone through in the last week and the changes are still on their way. But uh, Rube, the one I didn't mention is the one we're going to start with here. Jalen hurts. Um, it's fitting in a way because so much of what he talked about was taking ownership of this team. I mean, uh, it, I, I, it was good to hear him say it, and we know that he. I'm treats sorry. It. I got to take this. I'm really sorry. I'll be right back. Okay. Yep. Hey. What's up? Hey Ben, when he comes back, let's just start over. I was just about to suggest that. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> Apologize for that. No worries. All good? Yeah. Cool. We're just going to start over because we were so early in that anyway. Okay. All right. In three, two. Ruben, it was so nice this week to be down in the auditorium at the Novacare Complex talking to players. Yeah, it was just like old times. Um Really hadn't been in there since right after the 2020 season, other than, I guess, a Howie presser here and there. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's good to be back home. It, it definitely is. This is the Eagle Eye Podcast with Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. We want to discuss some of the things we talked about with those veteran players they brought down, among them Darius Slay and Devontae Smith, Brandon Graham, Jason Kelsey, and, and one other guy we'll get to in just a second – uh, and at the end of the, the podcast, we do want to go over some of the scouting department changes, personnel department changes the Eagles are undergoing right now and where we think it might take them. Uh, some important things there. But first, let's talk about Jalen Hurts because it's our first chance to speak with him since after uh, his first year as a starter ended. And he had some interesting things to say. Yeah, and it, it's got to be – and, like, he'll never admit this, but it can't be easy to be the quarterback of a team that's – at the very least, rumored to be interested in basically any quarterback that's available uh, by a trade or the draft. And, you know, I, it's got to be a, a difficult position. He's a young kid, uh, and, you know, he's he, he has not proven himself. And they've said – I mean, they've lavished praise on him. He's our guy. We believe in him and all that. But, you know, he can see what's going on. I mean, when, they, when they're whining and dining, uh, Kenny Pickett and, uh, you know – linked to every, you know, linked to Russell Wilson and um, Deshaun Watson. I mean, just everybody. Um, it, it can't be an easy thing. So I think it's important for him to really assert that this is his team. Now, it might not remain his team. We don't know that. But, um, I, you know, I think I think that's probably – it's probably a difficult thing for a young quarterback to, to go through. It, it, you know, like I said, he would never admit that much. He won't talk about it. Um, that's, that's something for you guys to – to talk about or write about, but can't be easy. And so I think with that, you know, and his, his teammates know what's going on. They read all the reports and rumors and whispers and, and, and you know, they, they know what's going on. He's got to, he's got to assert his leadership. And and I think that was uh step one of doing that was yesterday or uh, 
yesterday, whenever it was. <laughs> yeah, it, it, we're recording this on Thursday. It happened on Wednesday. That qualifies as yesterday. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, no, but you're right. It's um, and, and I think he, these are things he does behind closed doors anyway. I think he's always kind of been that, even when it might have mm-hmm. caused problems mm-hmm. in that locker room, you know, when he wasn't the known starter but yeah. uh it's even more important now coming off his first year as a starter and the eagles have it's it's been a really weird deal with them this offseason because publicly they have thrown all their support behind jalen hurts and i think back to uh i was at the owners meetings and nick Sirianni said yeah like we're behind him well our actions show that we're behind him and he's well which actions because some of the actions do when you're standing up there telling us he's your guy, those actions do. But then when we know that you were looking into Watson or Wilson or looking at the quarterbacks, it it does make you question it a little bit, but yeah, I I don't think we'll ever really know the effect. Some of that talk has on her. See, he's just so guarded in that respect, but I think what we do know about him as little as he he lets us know is that uh, he is a pretty mentally tough guy. Uh, and he's, he's gone through some things in his college career that probably toughened him up a little bit. You know, I don't know if he's the same guy right now, if, if he didn't get benched at Alabama and if he didn't transfer to Oklahoma, it's, it's a unique path for him, but I, I think it has kind of created who he is right now. Bama. Bama. He got benched at Bama. Um, yeah, no, I think that's true. And, and but you know, you could put on a brave front. It's it's what's going on inside. And if you're not totally secure in your in your place, it's not an easy thing. Puts a lot of pressure on him. Look, every quarterback's under pressure every every snap. But um, you know, how do you play the position loose and free, knowing that your team's been trying to replace you for the last three four months? Uh, they didn't. They didn't talk to Russell Wilson to come in and back up Jalen Hurts. I don't think so. He knows the deal. Um, but again, that's that's football. I mean, the, the Eagles would. You know, they're they're doing their due diligence. If you have a chance to get Russell Wilson, no matter how much you like Jalen Hurts, you got to consider doing that. So I get both sides of it. Um, you know, this is the world we live in. That every single, you know, contact with anybody, is, you're, we're going to find out about it some, somehow. And and he knows and he hears it. But again, if he doesn't perform this year, um, he's not going to be the quarterback. So, you know, they're, they they've kind of they're kind of covering both sides of it. And, you know, I think there's going to be probably six quarterbacks in next year's first round. Um, they got two first round picks. So and we talked about this draft day. I mean, I, I think you make the trade with the Saints either way, whether you have a Hall of Fame quarterback or a second year 23 year old kid but um they're going to have the flexibility next year's draft i mean this all kind of just lined up perfectly to you know to draft somebody so he's got to perform this year i I don't think there's any like if he has the same year he had last year that's not good enough that's that's not good enough i know they made the playoffs he had some really good games uh, but i think he's got to make dramatic strides to to you know, keep those rumors and trade talks and all that at bay for, for next year. Yeah, and I, I think the Eagles have pretty much admitted that. Every time you talk to them about Jalen Hurts, whether it's Nick Sirianni, Howie Roseman, even Jeff Lurie, they say, we believe that he's going to continue to get better. And if you're talking about him continuing to get better, it's it's pretty much saying what he is right now isn't good enough. And I, I don't think anyone would claim it is. You know, I, I don't even think Jalen Hurts would – sit here and tell you he's good enough right now it's just a matter of whether or not he can get there and an important step for him is going to be not letting all the talk bother him and not letting it affect him or if it does play a role it has to play the role of getting him to work harder or trying to prove people wrong some people thrive best when they think people are doubting them I don't know if that's his makeup, but I think that's a pretty common thing in this league. It's how the Eagles looked at their Super Bowl season. It's it's how a lot of, you know, it's how Brandon Graham became a bust into an all-time favorite. It's sitting back saying, these people don't believe in me, or if even if people do believe in you, manufacturing it to think people don't believe in you and, and trying to use that as fuel. 
I think that's a possibility here. And if, if he can, whatever seeps in, he tries to block it out. Something's going to seep in. If he can use that a little bit, then that's great. But all that really matters to him and all that should matter is that his teammates are, are with him and based on his leadership and maybe not always his play, but his leadership, they, they seem to be. Yeah. And I think, I think if anybody can, I mean, he can't work any harder, like nothing can motivate. Cause I think the kid works at, you know, as hard as anybody. I don't think that's, I don't think he can possibly work any harder. Um, but I think you touched on something really important. I was just going to bring up is, um, his his teammates believe in him 100% and on both sides of the ball. I think because of his leadership, but also because of the way he plays the game. I mean, he plays the game hard. Doesn't always play it well, uh, but, you know, he goes out there and gives everything he's got. He's not avoiding contact. He's taking hits. He's fighting for the extra yard. He's standing in the pocket. He's getting clobbered uh, and, and delivering the football. Um, players appreciate that. And there's not a lot of quarterbacks where the guys on defense – really appreciate the quarterback. No, it doesn't happen that often. You know, the de- de- defensive guys are kind of trained to hate all quarterbacks, you know, you know, pretty boys and millionaire, you know, multimillionaires and all that. Um, but Jalen Hurts is, is not any of I mean, he's doesn't have a big contract. He wasn't a first round pick. He doesn't carry himself like a superstar. He's, he's really very naturally takes on the persona of just a, t- a good teammate and, Everybody in that locker room appreciates that and and appreciates the way he plays. So I think that's important when you have – I mean, I, I've seen so many quarterbacks that the guys on defense just – they can't stand them. Um, you can take some guesses who I'm talking about. But, uh, you know, I think he's got the team on his side. He's, he's got, you know, the, the work ethic on his side. Um, the players, I mean, when I say the team. So uh, it's just a matter of being about – 20 to 30 percent more um, efficient and consistent and uh, then you have something when he talked on wednesday that was the biggest takeaway i had though was just him kind of asserting himself as the leader and the quarterback of the team everything else he said you know um typical jalen hurts very guarded which is his style it's not a it's not a bad play for a quarterback. I, I wish we would have learned a little bit more about his offseason. He mentioned that he did things differently. We don't know exactly what he did differently. I guess we'll have to dig a little bit more to figure that out. But just the fact that he is trying to change things up is important. You know, I he he's he mentioned and he's right. He's still pretty new to this NFL offseason thing. And it's an NFL offseason with him as the starter. He's trying to figure out whatever works best for him. And if it helps, it helps. I, I think that his his team will appreciate that. And when I say his team in this sense, I mean the front office and the coaching staff. We'll see if it if it pays dividends or not. But changing up your offseason isn't a bad idea when you're still figuring out exactly who you are as a quarterback. Yeah, I'm really curious what he did change if if he was talking about, you know, weights, you know, weight training or or throwing. A program or or watching more film which i think you know is, is probably the most important thing he needs to do because physically he's you know he's easy he's not gonna you know he's not gonna all of a sudden magically during the offseason develop a michael vick arm uh left or right but um the other stuff you can control i think really for him it's just understanding defenses what they're trying to do um you know how they're approaching him how they're trying to stop him how they're covering blitzes uh, I think that's the biggest thing for me. If I was him, that's what I would really be focusing on. Obviously, the conditioning and, and all that stuff, you, you're used to doing that. But you know, he's got to understand defenses better to, to be a better quarterback. And you know, hopefully he made that a priority. Yeah, and I, I think if you're talking technical things, you can always tweak motions. He said he didn't do that, but I, I think that's a pretty common thing for quarterbacks to do is to tweak their motions and make sure that – you know, even if they feel like they have a good motion to make sure it's better. So I'd imagine he did some of that, even though he said he didn't. Uh, and the other thing he did say was that he's healthy, which we expected him to be healthy at this point. But he did have surgery on that uh, left ankle after the season. It was the one he, he wore a boot on after the playoff game in Tampa. So it uh, seems like he's healthy, which is a good thing, because a, a young quarterback like this, not just for him, but for the entire team, 
him getting a chance to throw to new receivers like A.J. Brown and Zach Pascal, uh, it helps have the quarterback out there. Yeah, no doubt. Um, it's really one of the more compelling storylines in recent Eagles history is how much better will he get? I mean, and look, in his defense, he improved dramatically from uh, his first year to his second year. I mean, he really did as far as accuracy, as far as cutting down the turnovers, uh, just just awareness. Um, that's encouraging. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens in year three. But uh, you know he's going to – he's going to max out whatever his – ceiling is he's going to get close to it i, I don't know what it is uh, but he'll get there yeah you know one guy who's maxed out his uh his ceiling is jason kelsey you like that transition i don't know i think he's still getting better i think he might have had his best year last year i don't know i don't know about that he he's still playing at an extremely high level it was our first chance we we saw the video on bleacher report when uh when they drafted cam jorgens in the second round but this was our first chance to really ask him a lot of questions about it. And it was fascinating to me because not long before that, we heard Ryan Tannehill in Tennessee say it's not his, he doesn't think it's his job to mentor Malik Willis. And then Jason Kelsey, not only did he say he wants to mentor Cam Jurgens, he said that's how he wants to be remembered. He doesn't want to be remembered for just his playing career or what he said, a few highlight blocks. He wants to be remembered long-term in this organization for the things he did for younger players, uh, which is, you know, it's a special deal. It really is. Yeah, I mean, the difference is that, you know, Cam Jurgens isn't here to take Jason Kelsey's job. You know, Malik Willis is, but um, still, you know. It, it, but he it, is. It, no, he's not. I mean, Jason Kelsey's not going to get benched for Cam Jurgens. Not this year. Not ever. But he's going to replace him. He's going to retire on his own volition. Okay. I don't know what volition means. He's going to decide it, though. Um, but anyway, yeah. And I think that's that's what pros do. And, you know, I'm sure Kelsey saw Jason Peters, like, you know, working with, um, you know, young, young. We, I mean, we, you know, we know he worked with, uh, um, you know, Dillard. He's worked with, with other players. Um, going back to Todd Harriman's, you know, who was a veteran when when Kelsey was a young player, and he was very generous with, you know, helping. He was a he was a veteran of ten years, eleven years, and you, you see that, and you want to be like that. And you know, like like I think I said last week, the keys to the kingdom: Troy Vincent sitting down with Lido and Sheldon, who were there to take his job, and you know, teaching them everything he possibly could. Um, it's not easy. I mean, it's look. It's I, I think it's. You know, you naturally want the person that comes after you to not be as good as you. You know, he's just, you know, but you have a little, you know, I don't know. You, you, ha you if you're if you're comfortable with your place, then it's something you do. And if you're not, you're probably not someone that the coach even wants you to mentor. If you're not, you know. So uh, we've seen it a lot. I think it's a really important part of of football. It's kind of what keeps, you know, a team going and you know, keeps the pipeline going. I, I remember Brett Favre with Aaron Rodgers was like the first guy we had heard. who was like, I'm not a coach. I'm not his coach. I'm not, I'm not here to, I'm not here to help out Aaron Rodgers. Uh, you know, it's, it's weird. You just wonder about the mindset of players like that, but yeah, Kelsey, and it's a very real thing. I mean, he can, you know, I mean, there's I, similar... I, but to be fair, I get that mindset. If you're a player in this league, you've got X amount of years to, to be that player and to make your living. So I, I think it's, it's more natural than like, I don't want to like paint these. I don't want to paint Ryan Tannehill as a bad dude for not. He's, he's trying to earn for his family. Like that's, that's his job. He's made a hundred million dollars, but no, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I just think there's a difference between, I think when you have a guy at the end of his career, I, you know, I think it's a little different than if you're 25 in your third year, like, you know, um, although, you know, we hear certainly like A.J. Brown talking about helping Devontae. It's different because there's – they're both they're, – neither one's going anywhere. They both know that. So I guess a lot depends on the circumstances. Um, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't say guys who don't do it are a bad guy, but they're – you can make a case that they're a bad teammate. I, I don't know. I, I It's not like they're going to be – you know, it's not like Ryan Tannehill is going to like – 
look away every time Malik Willis is there. It's it's just like, what is it? And I guess there's different definitions of what it means to be a mentor too. Like, does this mean if Malik Willis has a question and he goes around Tannehill, Tannehill's not going to answer it? I, I don't know about that. It, it might just mean, to him, it might mean like, I'm not going to seek this guy out and, and try to really explain things to him. Whereas look with Kelsey, I, I think he has a pretty clear idea of what he thinks it means to be a mentor. And he's going to, go to Cam Jurgens whenever he gets a chance and sit down with him and look at film. And during a practice, if he sees Jurgens has the wrong leverage or whatever it is, he's going to correct him. Um, I, I also, also think, think he, good. I, was, I just think Kelsey's always been that way too with younger linemen. Mm -hmm. He's always been very generous with, with that. And but I think the thing with Jurgens is they're so, they're both so, I mean, Jurgens is kind of like Kelsey was when he came out. The questions are about his size and, you know, he's an athletic guy who's too small. So there's a real, you know, there's a real parallel there that, that can make, you know, whatever Jason tells, tells Cam and shares with him, whatever knowledge he passes along, it's, it's really valuable for him in this case. And like, yeah, I think older I, guys, I you can help a guy at a different position just with, you can mentor a guy just by telling him about where to live, where to, inv how to invest, you know, what to do with your money, 401k, get in this, get it, you know, so you can be a mentor without, you don't have to play the same position as a guy. Uh, but it, from a football standpoint, it's certainly really valuable. Yeah. And it's, it is, we've talked about this, but it's so funny to me that the questions about Jurgen size are not near like, People thought Jason Kelsey couldn't play in the league because he was too small. They just thought he couldn't yeah. play in the league at all. Um, so the questions about Jurgens are so minimal compared to what they were because Kelsey's really changed the position so much in his career. Yeah, I mean, they're still both really undersized. I mean, I think Kelsey was the lightest center in the league last year. Um, so it's unusual. But if you can make up for that with, you know, other – attributes you can you sure can have success i wonder if he'll you know he'll want to put on 10 pounds of, you know if he can if he can handle that and still have his athleticism it, it might be something they want him to do especially if he's taking reps at guard yeah uh was he he's listed for like 303 i think 305 yeah okay yeah so we'll see yeah it was fascinating though hearing kelsey talk about it not just that he wants to do it, but that he he wants people to remember him for doing it. Yeah, that really is interesting to me. And he's a he's such a deep thinker. You know, he's like it's funny when we talk to most players, you ask a question, and they answer. You, you ask Kelsey a question, we'll just sit there for like you know fifteen seconds or ten seconds, just kind of pondering it. You know, just kind of thinking about it like nobody does that he's just he's so thoughtful about everything it's yeah i love talking to him even if i'm not writing a story about him it's just you know you just love hearing him talk about anything yeah and he did downplay the idea that he was really like scouting cam jurgens he, he he said look that let's be honest here they're asking me to do this because they're basically telling me hey we're gonna draft some kid to replace you um and are you cool with it? Which is true in a way. I mean, they're yeah. they're telling him, like, all right, we see it, you see it, let's let's figure this out. But he also said, in some ways, he's been helping his replacement for the last eight years, which is an exaggeration. But he's probably talking about Sam Alu, who they drafted in 2016 with the idea that he would take over, and now that's not happening. Yeah, and I I just wonder how much Jason has shared with Nick and Howie about his own future. You know, if he's decided, look, this is definitely it for me. I'm not playing another year, which is possible. He's 35. Um, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, maybe it's a conspiracy theory, but I just kind of, it just kind of adds up like second round pick for a center. If he wasn't going to play for two years, that's half his contract. He might be a free agent after two years as a starter. Would you draft a guy in the second round knowing that there's a chance he might not play for two years? Maybe. No, but I mean, the, the point the Eagles have made about Jurgens is that this player doesn't show up in the draft every year. I mean, they've made that point. They're like, you know, because there has been some pushback. Well, why not just wait until you need to draft them? And, and their point is they feel like he's a special player that doesn't appear in every draft. 
which makes you like, I'll tell you what, it'd be great if Kelsey plays again the year after, but it would make the pick less acceptable. Yeah, I agree. That's why I, I just wonder what, what's been exchanged between the two of them. If, you know, if he's assured them that this is it. Things can change. A couple young kids, a lot of other interests. Things can change. A morning show opening at WIP coming up. <laughs> Things can change. He you know, last year thing about Kelsey, last Kelsey's going to be involved with the Eagles in some way when he's done. Like, I don't know if he'll be a full-time something or other assistant to someone, but, I mean, he's so – He's so just connected to this franchise, and I mean, he's he's an all time great. He's an all time top five eagle right now. Um, Jeff Lurie has really, you know, I mean, we saw the Eagles bring in Sproles and Selleck and, and Barwin. Um, I, I there's going to be if he wants it, there's going to be, and I, I think he will. I, I don't know what it'll be, some kind of consultant or a scout, or I don't think he wants to coach. I think he wants those hours after playing all these years, but he'll, I think he'll be involved somehow. How about the other veterans? Uh, we got a chance to talk to Darius Slay was one of them. Uh, I enjoy talking to Slay for different reasons than Kelsey, but I, I still enjoy it as much, if not more. He's just, uh, he's a funny guy. <laughs> he's, uh, he really is. He's one of the funnier Eagles I've yeah. ever covered. Yeah. He's fun to listen to. And it's so funny if, if you guys don't know, like he doesn't like being called Darius. He hates that. So he wants to be called Slay. And whenever a reporter says Darius, he just gives him that, gives him that dirty look and says Slay. <laughs> <laughs> People still do it. They forget what to call him, but he's Slay. And and uh, I guess Slay sounds cooler than Darius. Yeah, if you had a choice. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, he talked about the, the, he was asked about the young D backs and who's, who, who might surprise people. And he mentioned a guy that I was actually writing about already, Marcus Epps. Uh, he's really high on him. And so is the team. And, you know, they mention him every time we ask, you know, you haven't drafted a safety and sign a safety, Marcus Epps, Marcus Epps. Um, and it's, he's an interesting guy because he did play well last year in a, in a limited role. Um, and we've all seen guys who, who do play well in a limited role, but then when that role expands, become a starter, all of a sudden they're not as productive, they're not as consistent. And if they do end up going with Epps and Anthony Harris at safety, you know, it's going to be – I mean, there's only been a handful of games that Marcus Epps has ever played and started and played the whole game. He's, you know, he's he went from an average, I think it was of 38% to 48 last year, percent of the defensive snaps. So that's a good amount. But you're going to ask him to almost double it, you know, close to doubling it this coming season. And – that's another really interesting storyline going into the year. Can he handle the full-time job? Now, we were looking at the pro football focus stats that have him as the 18th best safety in the league last year out of, what was it, 96 safeties who 92. played enough to qualify. 92 safeties played enough to qualify. And that's a pretty good ranking. I mean, that puts you in the top third, well into the top third, where McLeod was 43rd and Anthony Harris was 53rd. So they're, you know – in the middle or toward the bottom. Um, so if he can play at that same level where he's physical, he's around the ball. Um, he, you know, he can run. Uh, you got something there. He's a pretty good player, but it's tough to make that judgment whether a part-time player, player can be a full-time player. And, and sometimes it's the undrafted guys, the late round picks, and he was a six round pick of the Vikings in 19. Sometimes those are the guys who don't maintain that as it just seemed like, the more they play, there's that point of diminishing returns. It's the first round, second round picks um, can make that jump. Now it doesn't mean they can't all, but you know, like Corey Clement or, or, you know, there's, there's guys who, you know, have that initial wow. And then they, they kind of level off. Um, That was just one example. Jalen Mills, maybe seventh round pick. Um, TJ Edwards has, is undrafted. He's kind of gotten better, but um, it seems like that does happen. So, We'll see. What's your gut feeling about Epps? I think he's solid. I I don't think he's going to be an all pro. I, I don't think they're expecting him to be. The problem with with not finding another safety and potentially not finding another corner is that 
your depth really lacks. I mean, you're in a decent spot with Epps as your third stringer, or not your third stringer, but your third safety. And if he's your starter, then it bumps up Kayvon, it bumps up Jared Maiden, and and maybe Reed Blankenship, who's um, an undrafted kid. Like, and they didn't draft anyone, so you're going to play three safeties at times if you're going big nickel. And I don't know if they have the players to do that right now. So it's not just well, about abs. It's about the rest of it. Yeah. It's kind of like uh Quez as a three, as opposed to being a two, when you bring in uh, AJ Brown, he becomes a three and it's just, it's just right for him. So they might need that AJ Brown on defense at safety, but I'm not sure that guy's out there. And if he is out there, I'm not sure they can afford him right now that <laughs> been spending some money, but um, yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, Kayvon, has really been – he's been hurt, hasn't shown a whole lot. Um, but, yeah, I mean, who knows about Maiden or, or Blankenship, these other guys. I still think they're going to try to find a safety somewhere, maybe a guy that gets cut, um, maybe a, a guy who's available in a trade for for, for not much. Um, they don't they don't really have – I mean, they have – at least at corner, they have some prospects. They have some – some legs, guys who can run. They've got some guys with traits, but safety, I mean, it's the cupboard's pretty bare. It's fascinating because you can look at the two positions and make arguments for replenishing one or the other. It, it, like if you if if Howie can only get one player, would you rather it be a safety or a corner? Now the argument for safety is like you said, that in general they have less there. They have less prospects. They have less lottery tickets. They, they 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 could use the depth at safety. Whereas corner, who knows? Maybe one of those spots works out. Maybe one of those young players can be pretty good. And, and because you have so many of them, it raises the odds. But do they feel as confident in Zach McPherson as they do Marcus Epps? Probably not. Yeah, I also think corner is more important than safety. Just it's just more important, and it's not you know, it's, I mean they're both important. But um, and I also think um, Epps is probably more established than Zach McPherson. I mean, I know he is. He played yeah. he played significant snaps last year. Uh, he only played like a hundred and I think it was one hundred and eight fewer snaps than Rodney. So you know, by the end of the year, Gannon had a three way rotation going where Rodney's snaps were way down and. Epps was getting a lot of them. So he has played. I mean, Zach McPherson's only played, what, 80 or 90 snaps, you know, and Epps is going into year four, McPherson's going into year two. Uh, I'd be more, more worried about corner. I, I think you can get by with – I mean, I'm not a big fan of Anthony Harris either. I, I just – I don't really get that. But you can get by with the safeties they have. I'm not sure you can get by with the corners they have. Yeah, it's a fair point. And it, it's another way to look at it too because – at corner, at least they have Slay and Avante. At safety, Epps might be better than Anthony Harris. So oh, it's yeah. like the sum of it is, isn't as good. We're keeping you up here. You all right? I haven't slept much lately. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, it's it's fascinating to see what happens there. What if James Bradbury uh, gets let go by the Giants? Would, would that interest you? Yeah. Yeah. Better what they have. Yeah, and he's not going to get traded. It doesn't look like it. Looks like he's he might heck he might be released by the time you guys are listening to this. I, I'd take a flyer on him. It'd be a, a cheaper deal. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Nothing to lose. He's better than what they have. That, that's true. Brandon Graham. We we I feel like we talk to Brandon Graham all the time, even if we're not talking to him because he's everywhere. But uh, he spoke to us on Wednesday. He's healthy. Good to go. How much can they rely on him? Yeah, it's a great question. And uh, I don't think we'll really know till we see him probably in training camp. You get a sense of it. Um, it it's hard to tell for a couple of reasons. He's an older guy um, and he's coming off that injury. So like if it was one, if it was a younger guy and a lesser injury or an older guy with a lesser injury, a younger guy with, but an older guy with an Achilles, I, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to go. And, He's so optimistic. I mean, he just believes so much. He's like, you know, I mean, we saw him in, in the fall. Like, and we, he was always out walking to his car while we were waiting to get in the tent to do interviews. And 
And he was so upbeat and positive, which I think is important to do when you're dealing with an injury, um, you know, to have that positive outlook. Um, but if, you know, if, if anybody can do it, he can do it. Uh, he's, he's a different kind of guy. I mean, he's going to put the work in. He has, um, he wants to keep playing for this team. It's tough to count on them, though. And that's why, you know, they're, I still think they might be one edge rusher short of, you know, really being able to turn that thing around as far as pressure and quarterbacks. Um, you know, I, he, look, he can only draft and sign so many positions. But if he's back to his old self, you know, between him and Sweat and, I guess, Barnett, if he's the third guy, and then Ridgeway coming off the edge, um, you know, that's pretty right. fun. What did I say? Ridgeway. Damn. <laughs> they even you got your Hassan's it. mixed up there. Yeah, Hassan is uh he's not gonna he's not gonna get off the edge at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, Hassan Reddick. Uh, so if if Brandon Graham is like an eight to ten sack guy again, which has kind of been where he's been in most second half of his career at least, uh, I think you're in pretty good shape. But I don't I still don't have a ton of faith in Josh Sweat to be you know, a guy that can really carry you through a season. I keep coming back to you had three sacks the first 12 games of the season. And I know his pressure. You got a lot of pressures, but, you know, you know how I feel about Derek Barnett. So um, they really need Brandon Graham to to contribute. It will be a huge boost. I mean, they were really relying on him last year. Uh, not, ju- not just to rush the passer, but the stuff to run. And I think Gannon had to get away from a lot of – what he planned to do without Graham there. Once he went from Graham to Sweat and Barnett, I mean, there's a drop off in certain things they do, and it starts with the run game. I, I think it really did limit Gannon a little bit. Now, can he fully trust that he's going to get Brandon Graham at 100 percent and pre-injury form? I, I think it'd be foolish to just 100 percent rely on that. But man, right. that would be a big boost for this team. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be another big story when training camp arrives. We're gonna all eyes on BG when when things get underway. Uh, I hope it works out for him. He's, you know, he's had such a roller coaster career. You know, you think about it, going from first round bust to making the maybe the greatest defensive play in Eagles history, maybe second best, going back to Ben Narek. But uh, I think everybody who knows BG is hoping it works out for him. Yeah, longest tenured athlete in the city right now, which is my favorite thing ever. I love that that happened. You love that stuff. Who's um who's second? I guess Kelsey. Uh, no, Nola, or maybe it's Kelsey. It might be Aaron Nola, Kelsey, Nola, one of them. Okay, I think it's Kelsey. But second, but the second, like outside of the Eagles, because the Eagles have three that have been here forever. Right. Yeah, it was Drew before he left. Drew Hade? Jeru. Oh, oh, Claude Drew. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking he wasn't here that long. The hey, Sixers' well. longest one is Embiid. Yeah, he's the only one, right? Who's the only who's one? Yeah. I think uh, who's next on it's it's like is it Corkmaz? I mean, it's like it might be Corkmaz. I mean, the rest of the team is like three, three, four years. Yeah. A lot of turnover. The process basically yielded Joel <laughs> and not much else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything and, else stand out to you from uh, our chat with some of those players? No, that pretty much covers it. Devonte was – I thought it was pretty good talking about – and we, we talked to A.J. Brown the other day about what he can do and help uh, Devonte with. Devonte was good talking about how – you know, he's AJ's a more physical guy than me, and I can learn. I'm, you know, he's a skinny guy. He's not super physical. He, he's 170, so you're not going to expect him to, you know, start overpowering corners on the line of scrimmage. But he did say he can he can help me with, you know, using my hands, getting off press coverage, and, you know, trying to be more physical and, and watching him. He said watching any receiver, you can pick things up. Um, but he said he's really looking forward to it. And it's it sounds like a really healthy deal between the two of them. They'll push each other. Uh, they'll compete with each other, and, and they'll bring the best out in each other. I mean, Devontae, you know say, oh, yeah, he had Rager last year, and and Quez, who was still, you know, you know, played well, but was kind of – he wasn't in any position to mentor anybody or tutor anybody. So Greg Ward kind of became 
the, the med during that room. So it's gonna it's been it's gonna be great for for Devontae to have somebody to bounce ideas off with and just on the field, I mean, to make this offense so much more dangerous. Yeah, I, I think as far as Devontae and the physicality go, per pound, he might be one of the more physical players on this team. That's fair. You know, he 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 played pretty tough last year. He does. He'll mix it As up. A, he'll, he'll he'll make yeah. tough catches. He's a good blocker. He played with an injury most of last year, which is something we didn't really talk about because you, you forgot about it. But he was wearing a bionic arm for most of the year. He was. Um, he, you're right about his blocking. I mean, he's a really willing blocker. You don't see guys that that size really, you know, really putting that effort in, and and he always does. And, and yeah, he makes makes tough catches. Um, in traffic and while he's getting hit. And, um, yeah, that's a good point about toughest pound for pound for pound. Might be a story. Might be a good column there. Yeah, you got to come up with that metric. No, you got to do it. It's your, it's your story. I'm not taking it. You got to come up with a stat. Oh, geez. I'm out of my, my element. Oh, the other only other thing I wanted to mention, and it goes along with A.J. Brown, but it was uh, Slay talking about getting to learn from you know a bigger bodied receiver because he hasn't really had that he had that with calvin johnson early in his career and he's gone i mean we've talked to him about megatron before and how much that meant to his career just picking up tips and going against him every day of practice but i mean the only other good big body receivers he's had have been kind of on their way out i mean alshon for a little bit here before he got hurt that year um, Anquan Bolden in Detroit in 2016. That was Bolden's last year in the league. So th- the chance to go against a big receiver in his prime daily and also be able to pick up some tips about, you know, how they're going to attack a, a smaller corner, I think can't help him. And Slay is, uh, he's, he's so willing to pick up tips from whoever that I think he really will gain a lot out of. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and and that's really one theme of today's podcast is just guys, you know, helping each other improve. And when when we talk about culture, I think that's a big part of it. And um, and I think you're right. I think guys that don't that don't actively do that, and it's not just mentoring; it's just learning from other guys. Um, I, I, they're not bad guys, but when everyone's doing it, it, it really is a healthy atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it is. It's always fun to see at training camp. Like last year, it was a really weird one, and maybe it worked out for one and not the other. But we saw Jordan Mailata and Eric Wilson out on the field every day, and yeah. you're like, "What in the heck are the linebacker and the left tackle working on together?" But there's always technique things, and uh, Eric was helping Jordan try to deal with smaller rushers who have given him fits at times. So. It, I appreciate when there's a player willing to take anything from anyone if it helps them. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, ben Berry suggested uh, or, or told us Sean Couturier is he second in uh, in tenure behind uh, behind BG? Twenty eleven. Okay, so he probably yeah. got here before. Kelsey I know he's on the Flyers in eleven. My hockey knowledge isn't that bad. <laughs> it's like he's on the Flyers. <laughs> That's a hockey team here in Philadelphia. Philly's outfielder, Sean Couturier. <laughs> uh, the last thing, uh, front office, scouting department changes. This is a pretty fluid situation right now with the Eagles. Uh, so I I wanted to just try to update everyone on what has happened and what might happen. Uh, this week, it was reported that Casey Weidel, the brother of Andy Weidel, was fired along with a couple other staffers. Uh, we don't know what this means for the future of Andy Weidel in Philadelphia. We know he is a candidate for the Pittsburgh GM job. Losing him would be a big deal. Uh, in addition to that, the Eagles interviewed uh, Jim Nagy, who is the uh, director for the Senior Bowl, and they're going to interview Steelers Pro Scouting Director Brandon Hunt, according to reports from the Inquirer and Inside the Birds. Um, so we know those things. We also know Catherine Raish is leaving. We know they already lost Brandon Brown and Ian Cunningham. Uh, there's a lot going on here, Rube. Yeah, and I think it's not unusual for, you know, this is when when teams overhaul their personnel staffs. It's always after the draft, but this is a lot. And it's a lot on top of already losing um, 
you know, I mean, this is when guys get fired, but it's, you know, you've already lost Ian Cunningham and, and Brandon Brown. It looks like you're going to lose Andy Weidel, even if he doesn't get the Steelers job. And I think he will. Does he want to, does he want to still work for a team that just fired his brother? You know, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what, what that, that was a weird one. That was kind of a surprising one because we kind of figured, you know, Andy was, I mean, he's been promoted twice. Um, he's been here six years, I think. Yeah, um, he got here the same time as Joe Douglas, 2016. Yeah, six years. Um, you know, you thought he was still kind of an ascending guy that they felt, they felt strongly about. And this happened after all the other people left. And they have so they have these openings and they need to replenish the staff. And we thought he would be one guy who was upwardly mobile, but. You know, and it's hard. Look, there's no way to grade these. There's no way for us to know what scouts are you know, recommending what players um, or what their reports look like, how off base they are, how spot on they are. So it, it's weird. Like, you just don't know, you know, a scout that we might think is this guy's great. He's just not, you know, his reports are off on everyone. So uh, that's why it seems like it's out of the blue, but they don't, they wouldn't do this um, if it was. It's just, the, the Andy Andy's brother thing is strange because if you want to keep Andy, you know, don't you like, all right, look, Casey, maybe he's not doing the greatest job, but I want to, well, I want to keep Andy Weidel. So let's, let's just keep Casey. Uh, no, he's gone. Um, so yeah. And even just since 2019, if you add like, you know, Andrew Barry and Joe Douglas, and I mean, it's a lot of talent has left this, this personnel department and, some are voluntary, some not, but they got, they got a lot of work to do. And how we alluded to it the other day, said, you know, we're going to have to hire some people. I think we have a good process for that. Um, some will be internal promotions. Um, we have to go out and get some some people too. Yeah, so get your resumes uh, updated, guys. Send them over to the NovaCare Complex. They have some openings. Somewhere in Marlboro Township, there's like another kid, you know, with an R-Lads guide and a, you know, laptop watching film who's like i can do that job sending sending letters to howie you know like Howie sent like 500 letters to <laughs> to different teams um it's a strange world that world of scouting you know there's i mean eagles have scouts all over the country and there's, there's just no way to know who's who's doing well and who's not there's, yeah. it's often a pretty thankless job I, i've always appreciated uh, andy weidel and joe douglas because they come from that world, they're very quick to dole out uh, praise yeah. for their scouts. You know, when 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 there's a scout who finds a player or who's like, you know, this scout's been talking about this guy from day one. We drafted him. He's a great player. They'll be really quick to give that scout praise, which is important because they're, it's so often pretty thankless. Yeah, that's a good point. And, you know, they're both – it's it's really tough to to you know think about how much these losses are going to affect the front office because they I think they had a pretty good thing going the last two years. You know they were evaluating players really well and I think lost. there's why that's why there's some anxiousness with it. If if the I Eagles know. last two drafts people were like, man, that, these drafts stink. Who cares if they're losing people? Right. If this happened two years ago, people like good, you know, <laughs> good riddance. That that's that's why you know, it's a little. Uh, a little daunting. They've got to replace people that were doing pretty well for the most yeah. part. Yeah. Anything else before we wrap this up? Um, no, any, any, uh, I was just thinking if there's any stories we want to mention that we're working on or that we have posted, I have a story on Marcus Epps just on, uh, just looking at his chances of being the guy that they think he can be. And, you know, we won't know until we see, but uh, there's, there's some, certainly some good signs, some good indications he might be, he might be a full-time player. Yeah, that's it's possible. That's the way it's looking. Uh, wanted to mention no Mexico City game. That was a possibility for the Eagles. Those got announced the other day. And they're Dave's bummed play. about that. I was a little bummed. I, I would enjoy a Mexico City trip. But, hey, the Arizona trip is still pretty good. It's not that's too far. Good play. Uh, yeah, it's not too far. All right, if you enjoy the Eagle Eye podcast, please do us a favor. Rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. We appreciate those five-star reviews. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the like button and subscribe there as well. That's it. We'll talk to you guys next week. Schedule release next week. Get ready for that. For Rube, I'm Dave. This has been Eagle Eye. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>